What's up guys, welcome to the beautiful, albeit slightly chilly Pacific Northwest. Today we're going to be talking about backup cameras. Do you need them? How do you install them? And which one should you get? Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us! I'm gonna be honest with you guys, when we first started RVing, I was pretty opposed to getting a backup camera. I didn't think it was worth the money. I thought it was just a gimmick. And so I will say for the first year, a little over a year, we were full-time traveling in our RV. We did not use a backup camera. So to answer my first question, do you need a backup camera? Absolutely not. Now, playing devil's advocate, do backup cameras make life a lot easier when you're traveling? For sure, they definitely make traveling easier for a multitude of reasons. One, it obviously makes backing up way easier, but two, certain cameras have microphones built into them, which allows you to communicate to whoever is behind you without cell service or without walkie talkies, so that's a huge benefit there. And then also, it acts as like a review mirror when you're traveling down the freeway. So no, you don't need it, but yes, they make a huge difference when traveling. <laughs> and second question, how do you install? It. I actually filmed the whole install process and that will come after our little review of the camera in case you guys are interested in exactly how we installed it but uh, I wanted to make sure we talked about the camera first. So question number three, how do you decide what camera to buy with the plethora of options out there? You have cameras that can be costing you a thousand dollars and you have cameras that can be costing you under a hundred dollars. How do you choose? Well for us I was trying to find that fine balance of uh, affordability versus quality and I think we landed on a pretty good option. The brand we ended up going with is called Halo View and the reason we landed on that is because it kind of nailed all the criteria we had for our backer camera. One and probably most important is I am super frugal so it had to be affordable. Uh, two, it needed to be wireless. I didn't want to have to run any sort of wires to or from the truck or do a whole bunch of wiring in the trailer so ease of setup, wireless capability was key. Three, uh, I was hoping that it would have audio because like I said earlier, being able to communicate with whoever is behind your trailer and hear what's going on behind you without needing a cell phone or walkie talkies is quite nice. And then four, wasn't quite as important, but I really liked the idea of being able to hook up multiple cameras and having multiple angles of view. So you can either switch between camera A, B, C, or D, or see all four at once. And it almost acts like a security system as well as giving you like side view mirrors and review mirrors. So we didn't install multiple cameras, but having that capability was quite nice. We actually installed our camera about two months ago before we left Central Oregon because we wanted to put it through its paces before I could give you an honest review about how it, uh, how it performs. And I have to say, I am quite impressed and I use it way more than I was thinking. Uh, originally when I installed it, I figured I would use it occasionally on the road and then when I'm backing up, I might use it here or there. But I pretty much have the camera on 24 seven. Like I said, it acts as a review mirror for me. So when I'm traveling down the road, it is really nice to be able to see what's behind me. It gives me that peace of mind. And it also allows me to check to make sure that our dirt bike isn't dragging down the road shooting sparks everywhere. <laughs> Well, that sucks. But it's not all sunshine and roses. There are a few cons to this specific camera. Uh, it is wireless and it says it has something like a 900 foot range, but while in motion, that range is greatly decreased. And when, when it goes through obstacles like your truck or your trailer, that obviously reduces the range as well. So I'm assuming their 900 foot range claim is like wide open space with no obstructions. But with our 36 foot fifth wheel, it mounted on the back and then the receiver and monitor mounted in the bed of our pickup truck. Uh, it does pretty well, but I would say the frame rate is reduced. So instead of getting a nice smooth 24 frames a second, you probably get something more like four frames a second. So it's almost got a little stuttery look to it when you're moving at high speeds. So there is a slight delay, which you have to be aware of. So if you're using it as a review mirror or a side view monitor, you gotta know, okay, give it a half a second. So if that car is way back there, it's actually a half a second closer than it really is. So there are some cons that you have to be aware 
aware of. But overall, for a 200 something dollar camera, it has performed quite well. I was also a little bit worried about the giant seven inch monitor it came with. It did take a while to get used to because it's right in the center of our dash above our uh, LCD display for our controls of our stereo and all that. So if you think that that might be too big for your cab, uh, they do make a three and a half inch monitor, but it is camera specific. So the one we got was a seven inch monitor. I've actually gotten used to it and I am glad with how big it is because you can see things at a glance versus with a smaller three and a half inch screen, kind of like your iPhone size, uh, you'd have to look at it a lot closer. So having that bigger screen is much better for at a glance viewing. So really those are my only cons. The large screen took a little bit to get used to and then the uh, lowered frame rate when at a high speed or if you probably have a long 50 foot trailer or 40 foot trailer, you might have more issues than that. Uh, but that's it, enough review. If you guys have any questions, I will be sure to answer them down below. We're gonna go ahead and jump back in time to two months ago when we were in Central Oregon and I was was installing this Halo View camera on our Keystone Sprinter. All right, next up on our list of to-dos for this summer is one that I didn't think I would ever really want and or need. I mean, obviously I wanted it, but I didn't think I would ever go ahead and do it. But after traveling for a year and making do without it, I've seen the light and I figured, you know what? It's time that we upgrade and put in a camera. <laughs> A backup camera, that is. Actually, the really cool thing is, is Halo View, the company that made this camera, got a hold of us and asked us if we wanted to check it out and review it for you guys. So we're actually gonna go ahead and set this up. Theoretically, it should be pretty easy because I have this pre-wired area right here that I'm gonna mount to, and there should be two hot lines that I can tap into for power. And look at this bad boy. A seven inch LCD screen. That is crazy. So I'm not gonna lie, there are a few more parts than I was expecting, but I think I should be good to go because I know this is a camera and this is a monitor. These go onto that, this plugs into that, this is your power, that's your mount. So I just kind of have to figure out how to put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and put you guys down, maybe set up a time lapse and then I'll let you know after I'm done how easy, difficult it was. Just because there's nothing worse than buying something, getting excited about it and then spending hours trying to hook it up. So I'll let you know how it goes. All right guys, now that I have this off, let me show you what I'm working with here. So it came pre-wired for this company called Furion or something like that. So if I probably wanted to go with the easiest installation, I should have got this camera because then it would have just plugged straight into that and probably screwed onto those same four holes. But that wasn't the camera we went with and it was also way more expensive. So instead what I'm doing is I took this all the way off. There's two little caps here. You can see there's a black and red wire. That is going to be replaced by this quick connect right here. So basically this quick connect is going in the place of that one. And then that quick connect just goes straight into the camera there and I will bolt it onto this little plate right there. So still pretty straightforward, just a few more steps and it's a little more intricate than a plug and play system like that Furion would have been. So if you have zero idea what you're doing and you have a pre-wired kit like this, probably should go with the uh, one that it's pre-wired for or one that's compatible with it. But if you're even like remotely able to do some basic wiring, this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'll even show you the tools that I needed. It's nothing fancy. So for tools, this is all I have, a Phillips screwdriver, some wire cutters. It actually came with an Allen wrench and then some black tape, some electrical tape. And that should be it. Uh, I will let you know if I need anything else, but I think I will be able to do the entire job with just this. I might need to drill a hole or two. I'm not positive, but so far I don't think I'm gonna have to. All right guys, we have officially hooked up the new quick connect. As I just have it very temporarily wired here. I only have one cap on and then I attach that to the camera which again isn't even mounted. Because what my goal is to try and do right now is just test it out and make sure that it is all hooked up properly and working before I go in there and actually tape everything, seal everything, and screw everything back together. So let's go check out the truck and see if it's all working. <sighs> all right and then up in here, turn that on. And then I am right now just using this quick cigarette lighter. Eventually I would like to have it hard lined in because I absolutely hate having any more cords on my dash than I need to. So there is an option to hardwire it into the battery or just a hot 12 volt line. So I'm hopefully gonna be able to do that. But right now, just to test it out, we're doing this quick and easy version. There we go. The nice thing is it has this on off button right on the cigarette lighter. So if you do want to use it, you can control it just with a simple push of the button. And lights turn it on. Oh snap, <laughs> a beautiful view of the roof and the back of the tree. Yes, that is a result right there. All right, 
now that it's actually functioning and whatnot, it's time to head out there and actually officially wire it in properly and securely, waterproof, all that good stuff. But it is good to know that it's that simple. I literally hooked up the positive and the negative wire to the camera back there and then just plugged the monitor into the cigarette lighter. Oh, I did screw on the two antennas and it worked. So. Honestly, it can't be a whole lot simpler than that. Now I just need to climb up there and tidy up and bolt everything on, Whew, and we should be good to go. So until next time, guys, remember, stay positive, get out there. Life is an adventure, so make some memories.